Okay, I don't know about that. But the first thing I have to do is I have to make sure that Homeland Security that's filming this gets my face. I want to make sure that you remember my face. And that you remember what I'm saying today. I got all there. Because I'm going to talk about some of the things that all the politically correct people don't like me to talk about. I'm going to talk about our culture. I'm going to talk about the risk of losing our culture. You see, I'm not intimidated by the fact that compassionate people, like compassionate conservatives and liberals, want me to embrace everybody and consider every culture equal. I don't feel that way. I'm tired. A man walked up to me just today and said that in, the t in this very city where we're standing, people are now selling bread in the streets. And he asked the police officer, is that legal? Is that allowed? And he said, get used to it. Well, if I wanted to live in a third world country, I could move to one. I don't have to bring third world customs to America. I'm sick and tired of being told that there's a moral equivalency between countries that have fascistic, tyrannical rule and the United States of America. But we're about this close right now to going in that direction. And the subject of illegal immigration has always been near and dear to my heart. And I'll tell you why. I'm Hispanic and I resent the fact that there are people who come to my country and refuse to learn to speak my language, refuse to adapt to the customs of this great nation, and also expect hardworking American citizens to stand down and stand aside so that they can take my job, they can lift 31 to a house, and they can continue to flood my schools with children yeah. that they, by the way, they reproduce at a rate about three times what American citizens do. Yeah. And that's not bigotry, and that's just fact. And I'm tired of teachers, and I've got friends in this audience today who are teachers who have been forced to take a training in learning how to teach classes to children who don't speak the English language. Yeah. Well, it's an when I came to the public school system in New York, I had been speaking Spanish in my home. And my mother sent me to school and said, go out there and learn this language and come back and teach it to me and your, my, my mother, my grandmother. She wanted to learn the language and she was an American citizen because Puerto Rico is a commonwealth of this country. And she still knew that I couldn't do better if I didn't speak English. I could be on Spanish language radio or Spanish language television if that's what I wanted to do, but I'm an American citizen. I'll go to Puerto Rico or Cuba or somewhere else if I want to speak Spanish. I live in a land where English is the language, and I'm tired of being embarrassed about that. La Raza does not speak for me. La Raza doesn't speak to the other gentlemen and women here today who are Hispanic. They never did and they never will because I'm an American. I just happen to have some Spanish heritage. I also have some Hungarian and Austrian heritage, and I don't expect the society to adapt to my Hungarian language either. There have been immigrant groups coming to this country since we began. And at all times was the expectation that they would learn the language, that they would be self-sufficient within a very brief period of time. And if they required sponsorship, it wasn't the city, it wasn't the state, and it wasn't the federal government that sponsored them. It was family members. It was members of the community who offered them a place to live, food to eat, and a job. There's no possible expectation on the part of anyone to come to this country and expect the American taxpayer to be responsible. This fair study that came out, I want you to think about this for a minute. How many of you are struggling, make decisions? I had a conversation this morning with a very upper middle class family member who said they haven't been, family hasn't been on a vacation in years. They don't have enough money to take a vacation. How many of you know that $678 of your tax dollars in the state of Florida went to support illegal immigrants? That's an outrage. I'll take that $678 and I'll be as compassionate as I want. I'll give it to my church. I'll give it to charity. I'll support any kind of effort to be a decent American. But I refuse to reinforce illegal behavior. Frederica Wilson had the nerve to try and change our language again to say that illegal immigrant or illegal alien was an inappropriate term.
It's the only appropriate term to describe it. You know, you've all heard the story. Calling an illegal alien an undocumented worker is like calling a drug dealer a pharmacist without a license. You have a right to be angry. You have a right to be armed with information. And that's the problem. We've dumbed down our children and we've been dumbed down so much that they spend all of their time involved in this ridiculous reality television show. While they're watching reality TV, reality is setting in in America. And reality is that you're losing every single day a little bit more of your country, of the very fabric of the life that you love. The idea that there are actually photographs and videotape being taken of American citizens standing on a corner in Jupiter, Florida because they are considered to be a danger to this country is an outrage and you should be outraged. You're not the enemy. Don't let them tell you that you're the enemy. You're the only hope to save this country. Whether you stand here peacefully gathering, there's not a single person in this organization or any other organization that I deal with from tea parties to, to uh, Slyman to Enos and the Dade County Concerts. There's not a single person in any of those organizations that has hatred in their heart. What they have is love of country, love of humanity, and love of the rule of law. I love the idea that I live in a nation of laws. And I refuse to stand back as my laws and my cultures and my language and my borders disappear. The idea that we have to wait till the last day of Bush's presidency to see a pardon for Border Patrol agents who went to jail for doing their job. It's an outrage that Ramos and Campion spent a moment in jail, never mind years in jail and solitary confinement. This went on in our country because we stood down and we didn't stand up for them. Well, it's time to start standing up for the law, the law enforcement officers. And believe me, these men and, and women who are taking photographs today and who are trying to worry about me, I'm their biggest supporter. I'm their greatest fan. I'm the person who tells you that they're the thin blue line and that will fundraise for them and speak at their gatherings and do anything. Not the illegal immigrants that they're worried about. They don't care about police officers in their country. The police officer is a target. And in this country, law enforcement has been a target. All the shootings that took place in Broward County, three quarters of the shootings against police officers in Broward County were done by illegal immigrants. Three quarters of them. Those officers didn't have to die, didn't have to be hurt. And that's the bottom line. The bottom line is, you have a right to defend your rights. Because if you don't, nobody else will. Margaret Mead said that never believe that a small group of concerned citizens can't change the world. It's the only thing that can. And you have to now make it your business every day, as Bill Landis and many of the other speakers said, to educate one person. You don't have to be aggressive. I mean, obviously, I'm aggressive. <laughs> but I, you know, I, I, somebody's got to do it. Somebody's got to do it.